Hey friends, it's a three episode month, and it's also going to be Halloween here in about 48 hours, so here's a tricky treat of an episode. <laughs> Y'all might already be familiar with the poem Tam O'Shanter by Robert Burns. Of course, it's bound to be best in the original Scots, but as a non-Scots English speaker myself, I always get a little more, really a lot more, out of any Scots verse after I'm familiar with it in English first. So here's what we're going to do today. Right now, you are hearing my good buddy Jeremy playing some spooky songs on his pipes and whistles in the background. And that's going to continue throughout. He did a really great Halloween episode this year on his uh, Way Too Twags Bagpiping History podcast. So check that out if you haven't already. You can hear him talk about these tunes and other tunes. And last year's episode was excellent as well. Indeed, all of his episodes are excellent. So uh, link in the show notes. Hop over to his show and enjoy this year's Halloween special there um, as well for even more tunes and background about them and all kinds of cool stuff. Um, after calling upon Jeremy to provide me with some music, I also called upon my dad to provide me with an English reading of Tam O'Shanter. Now, prepare yourselves. You are going to hear my dad and immediately wonder why the heck I did not inherit his vocal cords. Believe me, I'm well aware that I absolutely did not. And it's a real shame because this podcast would be way more delicious to the ears if in general I just had a little more of a voice like his. But I don't. I really am sorry. It's a genuine shame that that little bit of code didn't get copied and pasted onto my Y chromosome. Alas. After calling upon Jeremy for the music and my dad for the English reading, I called upon Matthew Fitt of Scott's Hoose. Now, Scots Hoose is uh, all about learning and creativity in the Scots language. They produce activities, written materials, songs, music videos. Um, they recently had like a poetry writing competition, um, all to help people engage with the Scots language. They have an amazing graphic novel style, um, uh, 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 what's the word, illustrated video um, with, a, with a really great reading of this poem uh, that I'd really highly recommend. And they generously gave us permission to use the audio from that video um, in this episode. So after hearing this poem read in English by my dad, we'll then hear it read in Scots by Hamish MacDonald. Links to Jeremy's show, to the Scots Who's website, um, those are going to be in the show notes along with the, the, the typical uh, links as well. Um, and I'll also put in a link directly to that, that uh, graphic novel style video. It's, it's really so good. I really highly recommend it. It's, it's excellent. Oh, okay, so here is Robert Burns' Uh, Tam O'Shanter, read in English by my dad. His friends call him Dave, but you can call him Heavy D. When the peddler people leave the streets and thirsty neighbors, neighbors meet, as market days are wearing late and folk begin to take the road home, while we sit boozing strong ale and getting drunk and very happy, we don't think of the long Scots miles, the marshes, waters, steps, and stiles that lie between us and our home where sits our sulky, sullen dame, gathering her brows like a gathering storm, nursing her wrath to keep it warm. This truth finds honest Tam O'Shanter as he from our one night did canter. Old are, which never a town surpasses for honest men and bonny lasses. Aw, oh, Tam, if you had been so wise as to have taken your own wife Kate's advice, she told you, well, you were a waster, a rambling, drunken, blustering boaster, that from November till October, each market day, you were not sober. During each milling period with the miller, you sat as long as you had money. For every horse he put a shoe on, the blacksmith and you got roaring drunk on. Then at the Lord's house, even on Sunday, you drank with Kirk and Jean till Monday. She prophesied that later soon you'd be found deep drowned in dune, or caught by warlocks in the mark by Holloway's old haunted church. Ah, oh, gentle ladies, it makes me cry to think how many counsels sweet, how much long and wise advice the husband from the wife despises. But to our tale, one market night, Tam was seated just right, next to a fireplace blazing finely with creamy ales that drank, ah, divinely. And at his elbow, Cobbler Johnny, his ancient trusted, thirsty crony. Tam loved him like a very brother. They'd been drunk for weeks together. 
The night drove on with songs and clatter, and every ale was tasting better. The landlady and Tam grew gracious with secret favors, sweet and precious. The cobbler told his queerest stories. The landlord's laugh was ready chorus. Outside the storm might roar and rustle. Tam did not mind the storm a whistle. Care, mad to see a man so happy, even drowned himself in ale. As bees fly home with loads of treasure, the minutes wing their way with pleasure. Kings may be blessed, but Tam was glorious. Over all the ills of life, victorious. But pleasures are like poppies spread. You seize the flower, its bloom is shed. Or like the snowfall on the river, a moment white, then melts forever. Or like the aurora borealis rays, that move before you can point to their place. Or like the rainbow's lovely foam, vanishing amid the storm. No man can tether time nor tide. The hour approaches, Tam must ride. That hour of night's black arch, keystone. A dreary hour he mounts his beast in. And such a night he takes to the road in, as never a poor sinner had been out in. wind blew as if it had blown its last. Rattling showers rose on the blast. The speedy gleams of the darkness swallowed. Loud, deep, and long the thunder bellowed. That night a child might understand. The devil had business on his hand. Well mounted on his gray mare Meg, a better never lifted leg, Tam raced on through mud and mire, despising wind and rain and fire, whilst holding fast his good blue bonnet, while crooning o'er some old Scotch sonnet, while glowering round with prudent care, lest ghosts catch him unaware. Alloway's church was drawing near where ghosts and owls nightly cry. By this time, he was across the ford, where in the snow the peddler got smothered, and past the birch trees and the huge stone where drunken Charlie broke his neck bone, and through the thorns and past the monument where hunters found the murdered child, and near the thorn, above the well where Mungo's mother hanged herself, before him the river Doon pours all his floods, the doubling storm roars through the woods, the lightning flashes from pole to pole, nearer and more near the thunder rolls. When, glimmering through the groaning trees, Holloway's church seemed in a blaze. Through every gap light beams were glancing, and loud resounded mirth and dancing. Inspiring bold John Barleycorn, what dangers ye make us scorn. With ale we fear no evil, with whiskey we'll face the devil. The ale so swam in Tam's head, fair play, he didn't care a farthing for devils. But Maggie stood right sore astonished, till by the heel and hand admonished she ventured forward on the light, 
And thou, Tam, saw an incredible sight. Warlocks and witches in a dance. No cotillion brand new from France, but hornpipes, jigs, sasprees, and reels put life and metal in their heels. In a window alcove in the east, there sat old Nick, in shape of beast. A shaggy dog, black, grim, and large, to give them music was his charge. He screwed the pipes and made them squeal till roof and rafters all did ring. Goffins stood round like open presses that showed the dead in their last dresses. And by some devilish magic slight, each in its cold hand held a light, by which heroic Tam was able to note upon the holy table a murderer's bones in giblet irons, two span long, small unchristened babies. A thief just cut from his hanging rope, with his last gap his mouth did gape. Five tommyhawks with blood red rusted, five scimitars with murder crusted, a garter with which a baby had strangled, a knife a father's throat had mangled, whom his own son of life bereft, the gray hairs yet stacked to the shaft. With more horrible and awful, which even to name would be unlawful, three lawyers' tongues turned inside out, sewn with lies like beggar's cloth, Three priests, hearts rotten, black as muck, lay stinking vile in every nook. As Tammy glowed, amazed and curious, the mirth and fun grew fast and furious. The piper loud and louder blew, the dancers quick and quicker flew. They reeled, they set, they crossed, they linked, till every witch sweated and stinked and cast her ragged clothes to the floor and danced deftly at it in her underskirts. Now, Tam, oh, Tam, had these been young girls all plump and strapping in their teens, their underskirts instead of greasy flannel being snow-white 1700 linen? The trousers of mine, my only pair that once were plush of good blue hair, I would have given them off my buttocks for one good blink of those pretty girls. Withered hags, old and drawl, ugly enough to suckle a foal, leaping and flinging on a stick. It's a wonder it didn't turn your stomach. But Tam knew what was what well enough. There was one winsome jolly wench that night enlisted in the corps, long after known on Carrick's shore. For many a beast to dead she shot, and perished many a bonny bolt, and shook both much corn and barley, and kept the countryside in fear. Her short underskirt, or paisley cloth, that while a young lass she had worn, in longitude though very limited, it was her best, and she was proud. Ah, little knew your reverend grandmother. That underskirt she bought for her little granddaughter, with two Scots pounds, it was all her riches, would ever grace a dance of witches. But here my tale must stoop and bow, such words are far beyond her power, to sing how Nanny leaped and kicked, a supple youth she was, and strong, and how Tam stood like one bewitched, and thought his very eyes enriched. Even Satan glowered and fidgeted full of lust, and jerked and blew with might and main, till first one caper, then another, Tam lost his reason altogether, and roars out, Well done, short scat! And in an instant all was dark, 
and scarcely had Maggie rallied when out the hellish legion sallied. out with angry wrath when plundering herds assail their hive as a wild hare's mortal foes when pop she starts running before their nose as eager runs the market crowd when catch the thief resounds aloud so maggie runs the witches follow with many an unearthly scream and holler ah tam ah tam you will get what's coming. In hell they will roast you like a herring. In vain your Kate awaits your coming. Kate soon will be a woeful woman. Now, do your speedy utmost, Meg, and beat them to the keystone of the bridge. There you may toss your tail at them, a running stream they dare not cross. But before the keystone she could make, she had to shake a tail at the fiend. For Nanny, far before the rest, hard upon the noble Maggie pressed, and flew at Tam with furious aim. But little knew she Maggie's mettle. One spring brought off her master whole, and left behind her own gray tail. The witch caught her by the rump and left poor Maggie scarce a stump. Now, who this tale of truth shall read, each man and mother's son, take heed. Whenever to drink you are inclined, or short skirts run in your mind, think. You may by joys over dear, remember Tam O'Shanter's mare. All right, well, thanks again to my old man for that reading, and uh, thanks again to Jeremy uh, for the music, and uh, my apologies again to you, dear listener, for not having a voice like my dad's. Um, my dad did mention, uh, you know, he's a, he, he did mention that he's aware that he slips into a pseudo-Scottish accent here and there, but he also, I think, very uh, accurately and fairly pointed out that, uh, you know, Robert Burns' poetry kind of is written that way. Like, how can you help it? You know, that's it's maybe inevitable. Um, before diving into the Scots reading from Hamish MacDonald, let me just do a quick little plug for our special October-only run of Memento Mori. Meanwhile, make music, shirts, and mugs over at bagpipeswag.com. That design with the orange printing, um, it's going to disappear with the transition between October 31st and November 1st. And so that price also is going to be disappearing. Um, I had an order go out just yesterday that literally cost me a dollar and 31 cents. I'm genuinely giving these things away as much as I possibly can. And so take advantage of the price while you can because I just love seeing these things go out all over the place. Um, it makes me feel, I don't know, happy, excited. I think it's cool. Um, so uh, promise that you'll post pictures when you get the stuff uh, to help kind of make some noise about the shop. And I will still enter... Everyone who buys one of those uh, shirts or mugs into the drawing on, on November 1st to win a $45 uh, bagpipe swag gift card. Um, and I'll announce that on, uh, on social media. I'll put it on Instagram and Facebook. And then reach out to the person who won. Uh, also, speaking of drawings, all Patreon supporters of the show are entered into regular drawings for albums and merch and books and stuff like that. This month, it's going to be one of those special edition mugs. 
So if you want to be in the drawing for that and for other future giveaways, hop on over to patreon.com slash droningonpodcast. And there uh, we got two tiers over there. It's three bucks a month or five bucks a month. And you get early access to episodes, these regular drawings, uh, handwritten year-end cards from me with uh, goodies packed into the envelope as well. So, uh, you know, what's not to love? And uh, thanks again to Jeremy for the music. Let's dive into Burns' Scott's masterpiece, read by Hamish MacDonald. Uh, happy Halloween, friends. Have a good one and be safe and stuff. Bye-bye. When Chapman bullies leave the street and druthy neighbours neighbours meet, as market days are wearing late and folk begin to tack the gate, while we sit boozing at the nappy and getting foo and unco happy, we think na on the lang Scot smiles, the mosses, water slaps and styles that lie between us and our home, where sits our sulky, sullen dame, gathering her brows like gathering storm, nursing her wrath to keep it warm. This truth fand honest Tam shanter, as he fri airy nichted canter, all dear, from near a town surpasses for honest men and bonny lassies. O oh, Tam, hadst thou but been so wise, as tame thy ain wife Kate's advice, she told thee weel thou was a skellum, a blethering, blustering, drunken blellum, that frae November till October, a market day thou wasna sober, that ilka melder with a miller, thou sat as lang as thou had siller, that every nag was cad a shoe on, the smith and thee got roaring foo on, that at the Lord's house, even on Sunday, thou drank wi' Kirt and Jean till Monday. She prophesied that late or soon thou would be found deep drowned in dune, or catched wi' warlocks in the mirk by Alloway's old haunted Kirk. Ah, gentle dames, it gars me greet to think how money counsels sweet, how money lengthens sage advices the husband fra the wife despises. But to our tale, a market nicht, Tam had get planted unco richt, fast by an ingle, blazing finely, where reaming swats that drank divinely, and at his elbow, Suter Johnny, his ancient trusty druthy crony, Tom lewed him like a vera brother. They had been foo for weeks together. The nicht drave on with sangs and clatter, and I the ale was growing better. The landlady and Tam grew gracious with secret favours, sweet and precious. The suitor told his queerest stories. The landlord's laugh was ready chorus. The storm without might rear and rustle. Tam didna mind the storm a whistle. Care, mad to see a man so happy, e'en drowned himself among the nappy. As bees flee home with lades of treasure, the minutes winged their way with pleasure. Kings may be blessed, but Tam was glorious, o'er all the ills of life, victorious. But pleasures are like poppies spread, you seize the flower, its bloom is shed, or like the snow falls in the river, a moment white, then melts forever, or like the borealis race that flit ere you can point their place, or like the rainbow's lovely form, 
he vanishing amid the storm. Nae man can tether time na tide. The hour approaches tam on ride. That hour o' nicht's black arch the keystane. That dreary hour he mounts his beast in. And sick a nicht he tacks the road in. As near poor sinner was a broaden. The wind blew as twad blown its last. The rattling showers rose on the blast. The speedy gleams the darkness swallowed. Loud, deep and lang the thunder bellowed. That nicht a child might understand. The deal had business on his hand. Wheel mounted on his grey mare Meg, a better never lifted leg. Tam scalp it on through dub and mire, despising wind and rain and fire. Whilst holding fast his good blue bonnet, whilst craning o'er some old Scots sonnet, whilst glowering round with prudent cares, lest bogles catch him unawares. Kirkalloway was drawing nigh where ghosts and hulets nichtly cry. By this time he was cross the ford, where in the snow the chapman smoored, and past the birks and meekle stain, where drucken Charlie brack's neck bane, and through the winds and by the cairn, where hunters fan the murdered bairn, and near the thorn, aboon the well, where Mungo's mother hanged her cell. Before him, Doon pours all his floods, the doubling storm roars through the woods, the lightnings flash from pole to pole, near and more the thunders roll, when glimmering through the groaning trees, Kirk away seemed in a bleeze. Through ilk abore the beams were glancing, and loud resounded mirth and dancing. <laughs> Inspiring bold John Barleycorn, what dangers thou canst make us scorn. We tippany, we fear nae evil, we ushka bay, we'll face the devil. The swats say reamed in Tammy's noddle. Fair play he cardna deals a bottle. But Maggie stood, wrecked sair astonished, till by the heel and hand admonished, she ventured forward on the licht. And wow, Tam saw an unco sicht. Warlocks and witches in a dance. Nae cotillion Brent new fi France. But hornpipes, jigs, strathspays and reels put life and metal in their heels. A one-up bunker in the east, there sat old Nick in shape a beast. A towsy tyke, black, grim and large, to give them music was his charge. He screwed the pipes and gart them skirl, till roof and rafters a did dirl. Coffins, stood round like open presses that shod the deed in their last dresses. And by some devilish cantrip slight, each in its cold horn held a light, by which heroic Tam was able to note upon the haley table a murderer's banes in gibbet airns, twa span lang we unchristened bairns, a thief New cutted for the rape, we his last gasp has gabbed the gape. Five tomahawks, we blood red rusted, 
five scimitars with murder crusted, a garter which a babe had strangled, a knife a father's throat had mangled, whom his ain son o' life bereft, the grey hairs yet stacked to the heft, we made a horrible and awful, which even to name would be unlawful. As Tammy glowered, amazed and curious, the mirth and fun grew fast and furious. The piper loud and louder blew, the dancers quick and quicker flew. They reeled, they set, they crossed, they click it, till Ilka, Carlin, Swat, and Reek it, and coost her duddies to the wark, and link it at it in her sark. Now, Tam, oh Tam, had they been queens? Oh, plump and strapping in their teens, their sarks, instead of creasy flannin, been snow white seventeen hundred linen, their breeks are mine, my only pair, their ants were plush a good blue hair. I would have given them off my hurdies, for a blink of the bonny birdies, but with their beldums, old and droll. Rig woody hags would spin a foal, looping and flinging on a crummock. I wonder, did not turn thy stomach. But Tam kenned what was foo brawly. There was a winsome wench and wally, that nicht enlisted in the core. Long after kenned on carrot shore, for money a beast to dead she shot, and perished money a bonny boat and shook both meekle corn and beer, and kept the countryside in fear. Her cutty sark, her paisley harm, that while a lassie she had worn, in longitude, though sorely scanty, it was her best, and she was vaunty. Ah, little ken thy reverend granny, that sark she coughed for her wee nanny, with twa pun scots, Twas all her riches, whatever graced a dance of witches. But hear my muse, her wing mon cower, sick flechts are far beyond her power, to sing how nanny lap and flang, a supple jad she was and strang, and how Tam stood like ain bewitched, and thought his very een enriched. Even Satan glowered, and fidged foo fain, and hotched and blew we micht and main, till first a caper, Sign another, Tam tint his reason all together and roars out, Well done, Cutty Sark! And in an instant, all was dark, and scarcely had he Maggie rallied when out the hellish legion sallied. As bees buzz out wi' angry fake, when plundering herds assail their bake, as open pussies mortal foes, when pop she starts before their nose, as eager runs the market crowd, when catch the thief resounds aloud, so Maggie runs, the witches follow, wi' mony an eldritch screech and hollow. Ah, Tam, ah, Tam, thou'll get thy fearin. In hell they'll roast thee like a heron. In vain thy Kate awaits thy coming, 
Kate soon will be a wofu woman. Now, do thy speedy utmost, Meg, and win the keystain of the brig. There at them thou thy tail may toss, a running stream they dare na cross. But ere the keystain she could make, the faint a tail she had to shake. For Nanny, far before the rest, hard upon noble Maggie pressed, and flew at Tam with furious ettle. But little was she Maggie's metal. A spring brought off her master hail, but left behind her ain grey tail. The carlin clocked her by the rump and left poor Maggie scarce a stump. This tale of truth shall read, Elk man and mother son take heed. When e'er to drink you are inclined, Or cutty sarks run in your mind, Think ye may buy the joys o'er dear. Remember, Tama Shanter's mere.